Hello and welcome. Each decade brings with it its own unique style. The 70s was a time of comfort in the home, a warm, cosy feeling created with earth tones and nature elements. It might conjure up fond memories of childhood, a time of innocence and freedom. I'm not a huge fan of the 70s decor, but it all seems to be coming back into style these days. So let's look together at the decor of the 70s, the good, the bad and the ugly. Sunken living rooms. Sunken living rooms were a trendy architectural feature in the 1970s homes. The one, two or three steps down into a living area broke up an otherwise open plan layout. In my experience, it was generally two steps down from the entrance of the house and then two steps up to a dining area. For me, as a kid, the long step was the perfect place to play. A racetrack for matchbox cars or a meet-up for the Barbie dolls. And there is just a sense of wonder and glamour about stepping down into a living area. Take it one step further and you have conversation pits. Similar to a sunken living room, conversation pits were recessed seating areas, often surrounded by built-in seating or cushions. A conversation pit would be smaller than a sunken living room and generally just have one set of stairs leading down into it. These cosy nooks encouraged conversation, but for me it would be a great place to sit and read a book. Macrame wall hangings. Macrame wall hangings were a decorative staple in the 70s interiors. I don't mind these today as they add a bit of texture to an otherwise plain wall. But I just like white on white or softer colours. None of this 70s brown owl business that was all the rage back then. House plants and indoor gardens. In the 70s, people were becoming more environmentally aware and a lot of the decor was earth and nature based. So indoor plants make sense for this era. They were hugely popular in the 70s and are still a nice way to bring a bit of the outdoors inside and brighten up a room. The record player, records and stereo equipment. There was something so very cool about a record collection. The artwork was better, the sound was better and it felt like something really special to carefully take the record out of its sleeve. There was a cleaning cloth to make sure it was all dust free and then moving the needle into place. And the stereos were a thing of beauty, all silver and so many knobs, it felt like you were launching a rocket ship. Add in that the speakers were as tall as a toddler and the whole thing was an amazing experience. In-home bars and the drinks trolley. There is something glamorous about having a bar in your home or the drinks trolley off to the side with crystal decanters full of good stuff. The 70s was a party era and nothing says party like having alcohol easily on hand. Coloured kitchen appliances. I'm putting this under good because it frustrates me that in today's world our choices for major kitchen appliances are pretty much white, black or silver. In the 70s, you could get the fridge, stove, dishwasher, all available in the colours of the day. And that leads me on to the bad. <laughs> okay, I hate the 70s colours. Look, everything comes down to personal choice and your home should reflect your style and it should be somewhere where you feel relaxed and comfortable. To each their own. It's just that for me, the colours of the 70s make me want to itch. Oranges, brown, avocado green, it was all about the earth tones. It's not too bad if you have big open spaces and lots of natural light, but a lot of this is just too busy for me. Also bad, mushrooms. Just too many mushrooms. Do you remember these from childhood? I don't mind a cute little mushroom motif, but the mushroom decor in the 70s could go a little overboard. Massive lights. These are just too much. I'm not sure if I meant to read in here or wait to be beamed up to the mothership. 
on to the ugly. Shag carpets. Shag carpets top my list as ugly, but it's because they are so hard to clean. They absorb all the smells, hide loose crumbs of food, and all I can think about is little bugs living in it. Popcorn ceilings. Okay, I just don't want to feel like the ceiling is crumbling above me. I'm not sure how this ever came into fashion. And then the thing I hate most from the 70s is the super graphic wall. For some reason, this makes me feel like I'm in a fast food restaurant. Painting stripes on the wall, even the floor and ceiling, was a popular decorating style in the mid 70s. But I just don't understand why. Usually done in two tones of the same colour, it just looks like racing stripes. I could maybe understand this in a kid's play area. I think it sort of creates a feeling of energy, but it's not what I'm looking for in my home. Let me know in the comments if you like this 70s decor or if you remember these things from childhood. Thanks so much for watching.